Hey guys, it's Goofy Goop the Balls, and today I wanted to give you guys a 49 kill streak on Advanced Warfare. I just got off my Xbox One, I just got this gameplay, I ended up going 52 and 5 on some ground war domination on Instinct, and this is the best game I've gotten so far on Advanced Warfare in terms of kill streak. So I thought what I would do is I'd talk to you a little bit about the gameplay, about the class I'm using, how to play this map, a few tips here and there, and things you can do to help you guys get gameplays just like this. So let's jump right into it. The class setup I'm using in this video is the BAL27 Grip Suppressed, and this is after the patch, so this is when the BAL is nerfed. So BAL27 Grip Suppressor with the perks Low Profile, which helps me stay off the radar, Gung Ho, which lets me run with my gun up, and then Hardline so I can get those score streaks earlier, and Scavenger so I can get more ammo and keep my streak going. And then for kill streaks, I have the System Hack with the extra points attachment, then the Bombing Run with the Stealth attachment, the Warboard with the Aggressor attachment, and the Paladin with a Sleight of Hand attachment. Now I did put a lot of time thinking out this class because every little adjustment I made made a difference in my class and I could never really get a solid class that really worked for me, but this is the one that I found works the best. A lot of people like to use the quick draw or stock attachments on the bow, or any weapon for that matter, and that's a good idea. I like the idea of being able to aim down sights faster, it helps you win more gunfights, and being able to strafe more, that helps you win more gunfights because it throws off people's aim. But what I found in this game is that when I use a stock, I always seem to miss more shots because I spend more time trying to strafe left and right, I don't spend as much time trying to hit the enemy. And in older games, when you didn't have to exo jump and stuff like that, it was easy. You could just move left and right and get the enemy in your sights, and you could get the kill pretty easily. But in this game, with the stock, you move left and right, but people can also move up and down, jump up to the side, and things like that. And so I don't think the stock is as useful as it was in other games. I mean, yes, it's useful for dodging bullets, but for getting kills and staying accurate, I don't think it's as useful as it's been in the past. Now in terms of the quick draw grip, it's nice to be able to aim down sight like I said, but I feel I play a lot more sloppy when I use that attachment. Because like I'll run around a corner and I'll think, oh I got the advantage with the quick draw grip, so I won't aim down sight or play it as safely as I really should, and that'll end up getting me killed more often than not. And so I feel this attachment really doesn't work out the best for me. In some cases it does, but a lot of times in this game especially, I just feel like it doesn't. Which like I said, allows you to fire from the hip only while you're sprinting or sliding. So this is different than Ready Up from Ghosts, where you could bring up your gun faster anytime you stop sprinting, whether it be to hip fire or to aim down sight. But in this game, they don't let you aim down sights faster. It's exactly the same as if you weren't using Gung Ho after sprinting. And that's because it was too much of a staple perk in Ghost. It wasn't a bad thing in Ghost because it was only one point, but in this game, destroy some of the customization in this game because it would become staple and everyone would have to use it. But I just like to use it because if I get into a tough situation and I'm sprinting, I can just hip fire right when I'm sprinting instead of having to stop and aim down sight and hope for the best there. So moving on to kill streaks, I use a system hack like I said with the extra points attachment, and this is one of the best kill streaks in the game in my opinion because it affects everyone on the other team. And when you put on that extra assist points, every single kill that your teammates get awards you with assist points towards your kill streak. And on top of that, the system hack is just really annoying, so it's really good to get an under your enemy skin. And now for the bombing run, I use it with a stealth attachment because, I mean, anyone can look up at the minimap and see it's coming in and try to avoid it and hide in caves and stuff, but if they don't know what direction it's coming in, chances are they won't try to hide from it because they can't really see it. Not many players will look up in the sky and try to find it, and so I end up getting more kills with that, I think. And the warbird, I use the aggressor attachment which allows it to be AI controlled and seek out enemies. And I use that because the Warbird, in my opinion, isn't that good. It takes a long time to kill someone with its bullets and it overheats pretty quickly. And I'd just rather have an AI control it when I could be on the ground getting more kills and it's shooting in the air. And then I use the Paladin with the Sleight of Hand attachment because that overheats kind of quickly too. But with the Sleight of Hand attachment, it is a lot better. You do have way less time between shots, so even if you empty your clip, you reload pretty fast and you can end up getting that kill instead of the, having the kid, you know, run back inside the cave or something like that. So that's all I got for kill streaks, and now let's move on to what I want to call map placement. So you want to pick somewhere on the map where A, people are going to go. Like a lot of people are going to go to the B flag, so I chose to stick near the B flag here, like you can see. And you also want to be somewhere where there's a lot of cover and a lot of room for you to use your exo movements behind that cover so that you can run away from enemies and not get killed by them. So that spot where I was hanging out for most of the first round is pretty much where you want to be, near the B flag, good cover. If I ever got into trouble, I could just exo boost behind some of those barriers and I was safe. And I was able to use my cover pretty well and get my kill streaks and build them up and start moving them around again. And that's one more quick thing I wanted to say. 
that's why I like this kill streak set a lot because I only have to build up to my system hack again with all my streaks and then I call that in and it pretty much gets me to my bombing run and the cycle continues and I can just loop my streaks as you see me do here in the second round. Okay, so one more thing I want to talk about, playing slow and not panicking, because that's the worst thing you can do when something bad happens, you get hit with a couple bullets is to panic. And I know no one tries to panic, it's just kind of your automatic response to being shot. So as you saw in the first round, I played it pretty slow, I stuck to this area, I let the enemies come to me, and that was what I said when you pick that area, the B flag, you want to pick an area where you let the enemies come to you, where people are automatically going to come, so that they're coming to you, so you have the advantage, rather than you rushing out and having the disadvantage because you're on their area, their territory. If you pick an area and they have to come to you, that automatically gives you the advantage because you can play a little more patiently, a little more slowly, and don't have to rush so hard and put yourself at risk just to get a few extra kills. And that can really make the difference on some of these long kill streaks because once you get a lot of kills and you're already on the streak, you want your focus to be to stay alive and get kills over time rather than rushing out there and getting kills as fast as possible because while you will get kills faster you will also die faster and you have a much higher chance of dying so when you play defensive play patiently you can keep that kill streak going focus more on staying alive rather than trying to rush out and get as many kills as possible as you also probably saw in the first round uh, there were a couple instances where i got shot or was getting shot at and i almost got killed or something like that but the biggest thing i can tell you guys is to not panic in those situations and I know it's really hard. I still do it all the time. If I'm on a big kill streak sometimes, I can even feel myself getting nervous just sitting there doing nothing. And there's no real way around it. You're always going to feel a little bit nervous when you're on a big kill streak like this because it doesn't happen that often. So you're not going to be used to it. But the biggest thing I can tell you guys is you just got to stay calm. I mean, you, it's normal to be nervous. It's normal to panic a little bit. But the biggest thing you got to do is just stay calm. When someone hits you, you're in a tough gunfight. Just stay calm. Try to recenter your aim. Get your focus on the enemy. All you got to do is breathe and take it easy. And if you die, well, then I mean, there's nothing you can do. You already died. So, so the best thing you can do is go out there and try to get your kill streak again. Try to get it going. I mean, if you were able to get it going once in the game, then chances are you could get another kill streak going again in that same game. Alright guys, that pretty much sums up what I wanted to talk about in this video. The kill streaks, the classes, how you want to position yourself on the map, not to panic, play it slow. Oh, and one more thing guys, I didn't have any friends playing this game with me. This was totally solo, I did this on my own. You see a lot of gameplays out there where people get ridiculous scores, but they have friends in a party, and they're all running like UAVs with threat detection and stuff like that. But no, I just want you guys to know I got this all on my own. So you can get these sort of gameplays without a bunch of teammates running UAVs and stuff. You can get into these good lobbies. You don't always need to play in a big party to get a bunch of good games. I mean, it does help to have people running UAVs, but it's not absolutely necessary. So yeah guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and this gameplay, and hopefully you guys learned some tips and we'll use them next time you play so you can try to get those big kill streaks. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button for me, or share this video with someone you know. And if you guys are new to my channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button, that way you can stay up to date every time I post a new tip, gameplay, or information video. This has been Goofy Goop to Balls, and I'll catch you all in the next video.